so clearly a significant positive, um, and I guess you know really a testament to what can be achieved by um, you know by science with an unprecedented effort in terms of coordination and speed. In terms of the data, the 90% efficacy in reduction of symptomatic disease versus placebo is much better than uh, the market, and as you say, even the company was expecting. Um, you know, we were expecting something closer to 60 to 70 percent efficacy based on the design of the clinical trial. And this compares to uh, typical seasonal flu vaccine efficacy of, uh, you know, 40 to 60 percent in any given year and relative to the FDA bar of at least 50 percent effective. So what does the data actually mean? Well, actually, you know, it's only headline data. And so this means leaves uh, a lot of questions that remain to be answered. But we know that um, there is a good chance of the reduction of symptomatic disease, and that's one of the, the questions that I would ask. So four questions that I would ask around this data are, you know, what is the efficacy by subgroup? Um, so in those patients that are in those uh, participants that were more at risk, so the elderly or those with underlying comorbidities, um, clearly that's key in terms of how we're looking to roll out this vaccine. Um, in due course. The second point, uh, how effective is this vaccine in reducing severe disease? So if you remember, Pfizer has had one of the more lenient primary endpoints. They were looking for at least one symptom to count as an attack. Um, and there were mild to moderate symptoms. Uh, some of the other um, vaccine companies like Moderna were looking for at least two mild to moderate symptoms as well as one severe symptom, so a higher hurdle. Um, the third thing would be around the duration of effect. So how long does the protection actually last? Um, and finally, safety. And to date, there's been no issues raised with the safety of the mRNA vaccines, but clearly we have to, to wait a little bit longer to see this, this data play out. Tara, let's, let's assume that this is um, the, the, the magic bullet, that this is the silver bullet and that the data looks fantastic and then we get to a point where we uh, need to distribute, deploy and supply and scale. Um, there are some issues around the temperature at which this vaccine needs to be stored which makes that slightly more complicated. In terms of understanding the phasing of deployment, how far out will this be? What are we looking at? The spring? the summer, the autumn of 21. Yeah, so there's two parts to considering that. The first, as you say, is the logistics of actually supplying disease. So um, the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine is an mRNA vac vaccine. mRNA is typically quite unstable, so it has to be stored at super cool temperatures or minus 70 degrees Celsius, which requires the use of um, uh, dry ice uh, in specialized shipping containers. Um, so Pfizer are managing this distribution themselves. Um, once they get the vaccines uh, to where they need to admin be administered, they can then be thawed and stored in the fridge for um, up to anything up to five days, is, is what the company has said. Uh, this suggests that in the first um, in the first instance, deployment will be in uh, high volume centers like vaccine clinics or hospitals. Um, and this will also dictate the strategy about who gets the vaccine first. Um, and, and one can imagine uh, we've seen. Uh, differing strategies between national authorities. This will be decided by um, you know, by, by uh, health regulators. But you know, it's it's the at-risk patient groups, as I mentioned before, so those with uh, you know, healthcare workers, frontline healthcare workers, and and also um, the elderly who are more likely to get severe disease than others. Uh, in terms of so, the second part of that is actually supply. How much how much vaccine can actually be produced? Um, to be distributed, and we know that um, Pfizer said they can produce enough vaccine to vaccinate uh, 25 million people by the end of 2020, and scaling up to be 1.3 billion doses. So half of that, because it's a two-dose vaccine, um, in 2021. Uh, so we're really looking at you know uh, mid-year before we can consider any sort of um, large-scale rollout of, of vaccination.